Oakland Raiders, my beloved Oakland Raiders, in their first full season uh, with uh, without the the Iron Fist, that is Al Davis, uh, went four and twelve. That is not that was lower than what I had them. Yeah, I had to, I had them going six and ten. You had them going six and ten. Yeah, yeah. that I just I had them going eight and something. Uh. Eight and eight. eight, uh, eight. If you said eight and something, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, no, I had no. I, I was waiting for that. I, I think I had. I think I had it going nine and uh, nine and seven. Now, what I now, just John, since you watch more Oakland Raiders football than I uh, than I do, um, I had a very interesting situation with the Oakland Raiders this year. I saw one game, mm-hmm. and it was the Pittsburgh game. Right. And they won. They right. looked good. It looked great. What happened? <laughs> you know, it, it. A lot of it comes down to. You know, it's it's it's. I think it's the most of a, of, a, of a lot of things. I do think Carson Palmer's just too old to be playing in the playing in the league now. I do think that, and I mean, it's something. It, it's something that that I mean, and it's not necessarily his fault. I mean, he's he's he's, he's old, and I think the I think the the and the fire, you know, that from 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 him is 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 completely burnt out at at this particular point. I mean. For what for what he did in the previous season, you know, going going eight and eight, coming from air, coming from a toxic situation in uh, Cincinnati, you know that you know, and, and coming to the the you know the the outlaws in in in, in the Oakland Raiders, I think played played very favorably to him. I just think that he couldn't keep that momentum going. You know, Darius Hayward Bay is still not showing me what he could actually be, and you know it's. Darren also on on, on the other side that Darren McFadden though he is a great running back he gets he gets dinged up a lot and so he hasn't I don't think Darren McFadden has actually had a complete season since his rookie year so I mean that's 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 another key factor the defense needs a whole lot of work uh, this the secondary as I said you know with with without Nam Diasavoy has definitely had bigger bigger holes now granted they played really well this year it's it had more to do with the fact that there was a lack in offensive production again when your main guy who scores you the majority of your points is a kicker. There's a problem. There's a huge, huge problem. You yeah. Know, for for example, I mean, uh, Sebastian Janikowski single handedly beat the Kansas City Chiefs on his leg. That's how they scored all the. That's how they scored all their points on field goals. That's it. There well, was and not, the, not, not, a, not a touchdown was scored. Well, let's say something with the way the Chiefs are with them just hiring Andy Reid, mm-hmm. you know, with, with, uh, with, uh... You know, and the Kansas City Chiefs were, 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 were abysmal, I mean, this year. And, I mean, now, granted, we also had the, the lucky, lucky, uh, uh, days in having to play the Denver Broncos. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I think even the San Diego Chargers didn't do as well as I thought they would no. do. They they finished seven and nine. Yet I think I think everybody had a given that Denver was going to win that. Oh, division. definitely, it was yeah. definitely Denver's Denver's so, uh, division. And yet they did not win a playoff game. No, they did not. not. And that's because he can't play in cold weather. And I said that a long time ago. He so. doesn't play well outdoors uh, in November. He's so. Mm-hmm. What I thought, uh, what I thought was very interesting about the Raiders, though, is, like, it seemed that they were really competitive this year, but they had a lot of close losses. A lot of close losses, and, again, it's a lot of, a lot of gaps in just uh, just overall play. I actually thought they should have beaten Miami. I thought they should have beaten Cleveland. I thought they should have beaten Tampa Bay. Though I think those three teams were not as good as, as advertised, and they just didn't show up. You know, and, I mean, I understand this is Dennis Allen's, you know, first year. How old is that guy? He's really young. Because he looks our, like our age. No, he, I think I, I want to say he's, I want to say he's like forty five, fifty. Are you serious? He's very. He's, and that's very young for an NFL quarterback. No, but, for, for an NFL no, because I remember watching the, the, the Raider games that I was watching uh, between the Steelers and Raiders. They showed him, and that he looks really young. The guy, heck, you you, you could say he's nineteen. <laughs> I know, <right? laughs> that is true. I mean, like, I mean, it could be. You know, this says that you know Pete Carroll is like the most healthy looking sixty one year old. No that's joke. That's how. Yeah, that's how yeah. people are joking around. But I looked at him and said. That guy is incredibly young. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, the the Raiders have always been keen on giving you know people uh, a chance that have they haven't gotten a chance before. So I mean, I think he's gonna do a whole lot better. Will they keep him though? No, will he, like, will he, he survive the off season? The thing, the thing about it is, this isn't the Al Davis run Oakland Raiders anymore. It's it's a complete. But they fired the coach last year. Yes, that was that was really because they got a new GM. And you know when when you get a new GM, you can you can choose to stay with the previous coach, but you know that he's not your guy. 
you know, and so, so a lot of GMs will, will say, hey, I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna pick a new guy. We're gonna go, we're gonna ride that horse. I, I think now in, 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 in this new regime that uh, Allen has at least two more seasons to just two. I, I think so. I just you listen if if he makes it back to eight and eight, I think then he'll have you know a, a, you know a, a third a third season after that. But if he doesn't make it back to at least eight and eight, I think they might they might cut ties with him. Well, what I find very uh, odd about this whole post Al Davis Davis era is that you know you keep you keep saying. Uh, you know, it's not the Al Davis run Raiders anymore. Right. Not, now I understand that's going to take some time. Yes. But at the same time, at the present time, you got to give the coach an opportunity to put his system in and so definitely. To put his that, I think that's so why. You're you're telling, so you're telling me Dennis Allen is only going to be there for three? This isn't college ball. I mean, you got to get you got to give him at least four or five years yeah, to show some but improvement. But you also got to remember it's it's still the old adage. Now, and I and believe not. I actually hate this particular saying and that and the fact that Al Davis, you know, made it so popular in the, in the thing of just win, baby. I, when really, and I, and I, and I said it uh, in, in the preview, that you need to focus on a commitment to excellence, which is their, which is their, 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 their other motto, their second motto. And then from that commitment to excellence, then you can get to the point where you can just win, baby. Mm-hmm. And 412 is not a commitment to excellence. 8-8, eight and eight, Though I complained about it, was actually going in the right direction of committing to excellence. So I mean, I, I hope that you know next season that my my goals for, for for the Raiders is to just play better. My my record for them right now is eight and eight. I'm no, I'm serious. I'm, uh, that would that, that would be a vast no, improvement. No, but that that is a complete opposite of it what was. you were telling me. I mean, it you went on this huge tangent it, and the whole eight, huge thing about how was, eight and eight doesn't get it, it done. Is, that that that's just the way Al Davis ran things. Eight and eight does not get it done. Championships are what gets it done. Playoff appearances is what gets it done. Well, well, do you think you've got a playoff appearance in the tough AFC and uh, well, actually, kind of a weak weaker AFC? But I mean, you got to you got to top Denver in order. You got to top Denver to, to get to it, and also you've got to be able to compete. With the likes of New England and uh, I probably Baltimore, I think they, you know, you got you got to figure out where the wild card's going to come from. Right, right. Well, the uh, other question that uh, we uh, we discussed, uh, where we wanted to look at, is uh, who's QB. We talked a little bit how Carson Palmer doesn't get it done. Do, do, do uh, Terrell Pryor? Listen, I I want to give the kid a chance. I do. Um, just well, he played in one game mm-hmm. this last year because Carson Palmer got injured. Right, and he was a uh, he had a forty six point seven completion percentage, uh, threw for one fifty five yards, uh, threw one interception, two touchdowns, along with thirty eight, and a QB rating of um, uh, of fifty nine point seven, and an overall rating of seventy point seven. Where that's 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 more of a Michael Vick stat stat when you think about it. It's you know he's he's a mo- he's a mobile guy. I think he'll actually be better used, uh, not necessarily in a wildcat, but as as a uh, as an as an extra receiver. I think you got you got to go in the draft and and find a potential quarterback of the future. Terrell Pryor, in my opinion, is not the quarterback of the future. He would be the quarterback for the now. Uh, you know, should you know Paul Palmer can't can't make it back, but I think you got got to go in the draft, and I think that actually really. The first thing you should get. They have a first round pick, but they should not pick a quarterback in the first round. It's a bad idea, <clears throat> particularly for this year. Yeah, this year. Go and get, get fix the offensive line. That's that. I think that's the the big number one thing. And then with your third and fourth and fifth round fifth round picks, find a value quarterback that you can that you can train and and teach them the system. The thing I was actually thinking about today, uh, while I was prepping and listen, and uh, you know reviewing what we said mm-hmm. at the beginning of the season, was uh, if you are an Oakland Raiders fan or if you are a Southern California team and you're kind of in the position of the Raiders and uh, like you're, you're, like you know like you're the Chargers and, mm-hmm. and that type of deal, how nervous are you as a fan with the idea that you have a quarterback in Southern California called Matt Barkley and how if you draft him your jersey sales will go up, and the team, you know, the, you'll just start making money on that. How nervous would you be? Because if you think about it, yes, the hometown quarterback would be, it'd be the home. It would, it would be a great feel-good story. But I, I do feel that I would be, it would be a very, very bad thing, only because I am of the opinion that sometimes you have to go away from the nest and 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 and, and fail outside of there before you come back home and possibly succeed. 
Well, yeah, but I'm asking how nervous would you be? I'm though? very nervous. Because uh, a lot of people are saying this is one of the weakest quarterback uh, classes in, classes in, in, in all time. time. Yeah. yeah. It, with Matt Barkley included. Because Matt, I mean, I think they were saying something along the lines of uh, Matt Barkley went from number one to, I want to say, about 24. Or well, yeah, also, uh, but, he's, but he's also got the shoulder pro- the shoulder injury now. Well, that's true. Too. So, ah, but... but, but the tr- prime example, Sam Bradford, shoulder injury, lost the entire year, still number one. Still number one. And, 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 and he's doing okay. And, and, no, he is. He's, he's, he's yeah. doing great. But, I mean, I just don't I don't feel that Matt Barkley fits the Raider mold as well. It, it was like when someone came up with the idea of, hey, you know, Tim Tebow could go play for the Oakland Raiders. I was like, eh. <laughs> you have to fit a certain mold to play play for the Raiders. I mean, and that, that's something that I, you can't say that about a lot of teams. Like, a lot, a lot of times you can, you know, Anybody can play. Anybody really can play for any team. But it's just like it's the it's 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 the you know tradition of the Raiders. You gotta you gotta have a certain amount of attitude. You gotta have a certain amount of uh, of, of a mean streak and so on and so forth to play for play for a set for the for the organization. I just don't feel that he would he would fit that. So uh, expectations for next year. If we can make it to eight and eight, that'd be great. Uh, seeing improvement. From Darren McFadden, I would like to, I would actually like to see him play an entire season. <laughs> I want to see more from Darius Haywood Bay um, as 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 a receiver. I actually want to see more from the receiving from receiving core as as a whole. I want more improvement from the offensive line. Um, I'd like to. I basically I just want to see a overall overall improvement from the from the entire team. 